Watch out! When you look at or play Bayonetta, is your desire to put yourself in her shoes? Or do you have a more lustful wish? Both of these fantasies come to the forefront when discussing this character, and divisiveness often sets in. As is the reviews for Bayonetta 3, a game series cursed to be called yet another M-rated game by some players, and an instant classic by others. We will always have those who revel in Bayonetta's exposed nature, myself included, and those who claim to be holier than thou. Too prude to admit that certain aspects of the human body exist. It's a shame, really. A character like Bayonetta, who actually owns herself, her body, and her femininity, only comes along so often in media. Women are usually depicted as needing to be more gender neutral, or even masculine in many cases to achieve empowerment. And while it's entirely valid for women to express themselves in this way, so few female characters are actually outwardly feminine and simultaneously empowered. Only two come to my mind right off the bat, and that would be Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and of course, Bayonetta. So why, dare I ask, is this an actual topic of debate that actively deducts points from a view scores for Bayonetta 3? This and many other points that I've seen have been wrongly taking the forefront for many reviewers who are otherwise praising this game as a 10 out of 10 experience. So we are going to talk about it. I'd like to start by saying that almost every review for Bayonetta 3 is overwhelmingly positive, even including at least 8 10 out of 10 so far from reputable sites like Nintendo Life, Destructoid, VG24, Nintendo Insider, and Guardian. Even the two, quote, mixed scores are genuinely praising the game and awarding no less than a 7 out of 10 goes to show just how undeniably great the experience is, despite their timed urges to claim they despised what they played. That being said, I'm about to start this video guns blazing, if that wasn't clear already, and talk about the unfair criticisms for Bayonetta 3 in its reviews. Let's start with what I already mentioned, that being the reduction of points due to this rated M title doing M rated things. Yeah, several review sites deducted points from Bayonetta 3 for being M for Mature, even ones that never complained about the series' sexual nature in previous titles. The most egregious example of this was God is a Geek's review. To save you the time of bothering reading it, Basically, one of the biggest complaints the reviewer had was that he played the game in front of his wife and kids and had to explain to them that, quote, Daddy isn't a pervert. First of all, if you look at the clips at his gameplay, you'll notice he did not play with naive angel mode on. Yeah. Platinum Games literally included a mode in Bayo 3 to avoid this exact response he was complaining about, and to appease players like this who claim to be oh so pure that they believe any form of bodily expression should be banned from the world. And secondly, sir, why are you playing an M-rated game around your kids? There's some parenting questions to be answered there, so maybe you should problem solve that before taking your self-caused anger out on your review score. So points are already dropping like flies from this, but there's one more unfair deduction being made, and that's hardware limitations. It's funny, while some reviewers such as Nintendo Life praised the game for looking gorgeous, a few sites noted the environments having low res textures and being barren. Now, the bland textures I can get, but the barren environments criticism seems to contradict every other praise for the game being that the performance stays steady at 60 frames and that environments have more activities in them than ever before, so which one is it? You can't claim the environments are barren and then say there's a lot to do in them. If by barren you mean the backgrounds don't have many assets, is that really something to blame the game on? When you said it's a miracle that these spectacles unfold at all on the Nintendo Switch, would you prefer they trade the performance you praise so highly for the textures you barely notice during gameplay? Or for a few assets in the distance that have no effect on the game? I honestly don't get how they can deduct points for a hardware limitation, especially one so inconsequential, and a complaint that directly contradicts a praise they sang to the game earlier. Now, that's not to say Every criticism is unfair. There have been some divisive views on mandatory segments of the game, the most obvious being the viola sections. As a character, it seems reviewers either love her or hate her. There is no middle ground. 
Personally, I don't understand the criticisms. From what I've seen, she acts more than understandably considering her circumstances. But one thing that seems to be agreed on is that playing as Viola is really fun. Now, if she really does bother these reviewers that much with her personality, sure, I can see that deducting points from the experience. I'd just as easily not want to play an ultra-fun hack-and-slash game featuring Kylo Ren. On top of the Viola segments, there are other mandatory gameplay variations players must undergo, which is also bound to divide opinions. With so many different forms of gaming in one package, some of us will definitely prefer some of these over the others, and maybe even dislike some. For the most part, many reviewers seem to like all these varied formats, but there are a few who genuinely didn't like some of them. That's entirely understandable. There's even one reviewer, Nintendo World Report, that said they didn't like the mandatory genre stealth segments. While I know I'm going to adore these, as most reviewers have, I can completely understand someone not being into it and becoming frustrated that the segments are mandatory. That is totally fair. The last valid criticism that seems pretty common is that the camera isn't always in the best spot for combat when using Demon Slave. This usually occurs when Bayonetta is cornered or surrounded by enemies from different sides. Not a common occurrence in the slightest, as enemies usually come from one direction, but I can definitely see this not being so pleasant when trying to get a perfect score. All the rest in reviews, though, seem to be nothing but positives. Let's go over some of the best compliments Bayonetta 3 is receiving. For starters, the set pieces are demanding the highest of praises. No one is disagreeing that Bayonetta 3 constantly delivers on new, creative, and fun ways to entertain us with its all-out spectacle. Next is of course the gameplay. Playing as Bayonetta, Viola, and Jean has been universally acclaimed. Each witch offers a distinct presence in the game, and apparently we're in for some real treats with this. The new weapons Bayonetta acquires are supposedly the most outrageous and fun we've ever had, especially when factoring the accompanying masquerade forms. Skill trees for each weapon also offer worthwhile upgrades to make our experience even more insane and customized. Speaking of customization, to top this all off, Bayonetta 3 offers the most customization in the franchise thus far, both with cosmetics and gameplay. I can't wait to see the sheer variety we'll have. All of these aspects come together to also apparently make this the most replayable Bayonetta game, which is saying a lot as the first two were already designed with replayability in mind. Another common praise being sang for Bayonetta 3 is the expanded maps we can traverse, and within them, far more puzzle challenges and exploration than ever before for the series. This was something I personally really wanted, so I'm happy we're getting actual sandboxes this time. Arguably, though, the most shocking praise Bayonetta 3 is receiving is in regards to its story. While there seem to be very few naysayers, most reputable sites are stating that Bayonetta 3 not only has the most coherent story in the trilogy, but that it's by far the best. Nintendo Life even mentioned that surprises didn't stop all the way up to the final moments. And nearly every single review for the game has mentioned that meeting and interacting with other universe Bayonettas were the absolute best moments in the game. How do you feel about these statements from reviewers? What sits right with you and what doesn't? Let me know down in the comments and feel free to check out my video explaining why Bayonetta 3 is selling so well right now after this one.